We're with the 1999 NASCAR Cup Series champion and Hall of Famer Dale Jarrett at the NASCAR Championship Ignition Luncheon. You are full time here in Arizona while you're going around with NBC and broadcasting all the races. But how much are you actually living here in Arizona? Because, I mean, do you endure these summers that we're getting here this past year? <laughs> <laughs> I actually do. This is full time for me now. Uh, I moved here in May of 21 and uh, I don't have a home anywhere else. So uh, I, I'm fortunate to get to leave every once in a while, but I, I will say that I knew it was gonna be hot. Uh, this summer might have been the extreme side of it, but didn't keep me off the golf course. I, I can play my bad golf in any weather. <laughs> <laughs> and you've lived here for a couple of years now. So what's kind of been your favorite parts about living in Arizona and then maybe some of the not so favorite parts too moving out here out west? Yeah, I, I haven't, I, the favorite parts are the weather's great. The golf courses are fantastic. The restaurants are even better. Uh, the, the people I've, I've found to be uh, very friendly and accommodating, and I've made a lot of new friends here. Uh, I, I don't know that I've found a negative side to uh, that at all. I, you know, I haven't run across uh, but just a few scorpions and very few rattlesnakes and not many coyotes. So everything's pretty good in my mind. Well, I'm glad you appreciate that. And someone else <laughs> who I know appreciates the Valley is Michael McDowell from Glendale, Arizona, coming yeah. off that Indianapolis win. You're there broadcasting for NBC Sports. But you and Michael have an interesting connection. When you retired, yep. he was one who hopped into Michael Waltrip Racing and, yeah. and turned into the double zero car. So you kind of knowing Michael to that extent, and of course, watching him all these years grow up, Daytona 500, now at Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. What do you think that win kind of meant to a driver like that who you saw when he just came into the sport way back in the early 2000s. Yeah, it's been great to see that progression uh, of this driver that I knew had a lot of talent. Um, you know, I was one that uh, recommended uh, Michael that I thought he would be a good fit. Um, it didn't start off great because I think the the first race after that was Texas where he had the tremendous crash in qualifying. And uh, But you know, he made it through that and has persevered since then. I, I appreciate the fact that you know it's been a struggle and uh, you know, not everybody can have that smooth coming in, has the talent, gets the backing right from the beginning. Uh, you know, that's not that it's ever easy, but that's much easier than going the route that Michael has gone. But I appreciate the, the efforts in staying with the team and understanding that as they grow, he's going to be better too. And they've done that. Um, you know, the Daytona 500 win was fantastic and doesn't get any better than that. But then when you go and dominate a race at Indy the way that Michael did, it, it opens everyone's eyes. And I, I'm just excited to see what they can do in the playoffs. Uh, you know, I know it's a difficult challenge. I mean, this first round is no joke, man. This, when you talk about Darlington and Kansas and Bristol, I mean, that's as hard as it gets from a driver's perspective. But it's also an opportunity right there that if you can go through those three races and not have problems, and that's what Michael is really good at, is taking care of equipment and finding himself in the right spot at the end of these races. And uh, he could be in that round of 12. And the NASCAR Championship returns right here at Phoenix on November 5th. Just how important is it, do you think, for NASCAR to be coming into Phoenix? Phoenix does a great job activating the whole city and activating mm -hmm. the racetrack and buying everyone in. How vital is it to the community to have this championship race at Phoenix Raceway? I, I think it's the perfect spot. You know, you, I know that at some point in time, it, it probably will change, but I don't look forward to that day. I hope that it doesn't happen, not just because I live here, but because of the fact I think the racetrack's perfect, the fans embrace it, and the changes that were made at Phoenix Raceway a few years ago uh, were just phenomenal for the fan experience uh, that you can come and have. You see, you know, the campsites are sold out, the, the, the race is sold out, other than some standing room only. So it's they're showing that they like what they see here too. And from a driver's standpoint, the racetrack is such a challenge. I mean, I think it's the, the true track to show who the true champion really is. You, it, it, it incorporates a little bit of everything from the driver's side of it to the crew side of it. And I think it just encompasses what NASCAR is about. And it's a team sport and the driver has to get the job done. And of course, we're racing at Darlington. Last time we were there, you had some really cool moments. We had multiple throwbacks to your good old UPS car. And <laughs> I got to know, do people still ask you when you're going to drive that big brown truck? Just happened yesterday. Um, <laughs> no kidding. It's, you know, you never know where it's going to happen. Are you going to race the big brown truck? No, I'm not driving the truck. I'm going to hold my breath and tell you you drive that big brown truck. <gasps> you know, you don't expect it in Scottsdale or Phoenix as much unless the race is around, but uh, you know, it, it, it's amazing how those commercials kind of change things. And, you know, I, 
I became more well known for the commercials than I did for winning the championship in 99. You know, when UPS came along in 2001 and we did this, it's just incredible. And, and that's continued on. And uh, uh, it's a lot of fun. You know, it, it's you realize that, you know, you made a difference and people recognized what you were doing. So uh, I, I have a good time with it. And of course, NBC hosts the championship channel yep. 12 here in the Phoenix area. But it just looks like you guys have so much fun. You, Dale. Uh, Jeff, you and Kyle are always having a good time. Brad, Jordy, I mean, it really feels like a family dynamic when you guys on NBC are on TV. What has it meant to you to go from the Coca-Cola racing family where you knew a handful of them, right? Yeah. And now your family again at NBC. Yeah, it's been great. You know, they, they brought uh, four of us back, a Coca-Cola racing family that were original members. Uh, uh, Kyle Petty, Jeff Burton, Bobby Labonte, who unfortunately doesn't work with us at NBC anymore, but but then myself. So three of the four of us uh, see each other each and every weekend these last 20 weeks we have a great time uh, we have the hardest working people uh, in the sport from from the side of TV uh, that I've seen uh, and that's not just the on-air personalities that you see and hear from uh, the behind the scenes people uh, I've watched grow uh, from my days at ESPN working uh, with some of them and now here they are at NBC it's just incredible the effort that's put forth and we do have a good time I mean it is it's not hard to have a good time with this group if you can't enjoy this group uh, I I'm not sure that you're ever going to be made out for TV or NASCAR. And uh, but I tell them I, I would work for free if I could work with Kyle Petty every weekend. And, uh, you know, fortunately, I get paid and get to work with Kyle most of the time. Uh, it, it is always an experience. And and uh, we just look forward to, you know, our, our part of the season is perfect. You know, we get the the lead up to the playoffs, uh, the end of the regular season, which is always fun. And, and then these 10 weeks of the playoffs, just incredible. And uh, we look forward to covering it. Well, you guys can check out Dale Jarrett and his NBC family November 5th NASCAR Championship weekend here at Phoenix Raceway.